Hi guys, it's Miji here. I'm super excited because today we're going to be doing a sew along for my new uh, spring patterns. So we have 9550 and 9551 and introducing extended sizing. So I'm super excited. Same pattern, but it does have a different number. So I don't want to confuse you guys. It is the same exact pattern. And this one I chose to photograph me in the short one. And I uh, photographed Aronica, which is my beautiful sexy, confident, amazing model uh, in the longer maxi. Um, I am really excited about this because since I signed on as the VP of the Big Four last October, which I'm sure not everybody knows, um, I've been doing a lot <laughs> to change certain things um, that you guys have been asking for. Along with the entire team, they are all very eager to show you that we are listening and we are making these changes. So the extended sizing going up to a 34W um, is really great. We're going to be covering up to a 38W, which will be coming out very soon. Um, and, and we're going to keep doing our very best um, to let you know that we're listening and we're trying to make all these changes. I'm also excited that we're doing um, finished garment measurements on the back of the envelopes, which is really important because for some reason we had finished garment measurements sometimes um, and then they weren't always the ones that we needed so now we have to have bust waist and hip on the back of that envelope so we know what pattern size we're cutting um, and among those two things I mean we're doing a lot of things that you will start to see over time obviously things take time but we are working very hard I know I'm working very hard <laughs> So this same intro will be in the next pattern. So the other pattern is 9539, my uh, misses in the longer version. And then Aronica's is 9540. And I put her in the shorter version because hello, legs. Yes, she's so fly. I love her. Um, same pattern. Again, you get two options in each pattern uh, for length, um, just like I showed you with the other two piece. You also have the option of length and then two back views. Uh, we got so many great comments about the extended sizing and um, for Aronica specifically because she's such a badass. So I'm really excited and I just wanted to say thank you. Um, okay, now that I'm done talking, you're going to hear this again <laughs> when you watch the other sew along. I wanted to also point out that on the back of the envelopes, remember that you always have fabric recommendations along with any notions that you're going to need. Um, and of course, uh, fabric yardage based on what size you're going to be cutting. All right, let's get started. So for the skirt, you're going to be cutting uh, pattern piece number 13. This is our sash for our skirt. You're also going to cut out pattern piece number three. This is the front facing for both views A and B. You're going to be cutting out two from your sash and you're going to be cutting out one on the fold and then one on the fold of interfacing. So because I'm doing the back view for B, I'm going to be cutting out pattern piece number nine, which as you can see is the back facing for B. And you're going to cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. You're also going to cut out pattern piece number 12. This is a, the yoke back to our skirt or uh, to your shorts, whichever one you're making. But again, I'm making the skirt. You're going to cut four of fabric and you're going to cut two of interfacing. So you're also gonna cut out pattern piece number eight. This is the back tie. Remember that I'm doing view B, the low back with the tie. So this is back tie for B, and you're going to cut out two. You're also gonna cut out pattern piece number 11. This is our yoke front. You're gonna cut two on the fold of fabric, and you're gonna cut one on the fold of interfacing. You're also gonna cut out pattern piece number seven. If you're doing the same back view that I'm doing, this is back B, pattern piece number seven, and I have cut along the line so that I could do my elastic as opposed to doing the cuff. You're also gonna cut out pattern piece number seven. This is the back for view B, and although I am cutting the view B for the back, I'm still gonna be doing the elastic casing um, as if I was doing view A. You're gonna cut out two of your back. Now you're gonna cut out front A or B, which is the same front for both views, and you're gonna cut one on the fold. Your sleeve has a cutting line for view B if you're doing the cuff, or it has a view A cutting line if you're doing the elastic. Now I like the longer length for the cuff, so I actually cut at the B line, even though I still intend on doing the elastic. Remember, you can mix and match and do whatever you want. These are really just 
sort of a guide for you to um, do what you love, right? And so if you wanna switch something up, you totally can do that. There is no absolute, you can only do view B with a cuff. You could do view B with the elastic or you could do view A if you want to do view A with the cuff instead of with the elastic. So that is up to you, you make that choice. Okay, then we're gonna cut out pattern piece number 10. This is the skirt front and back, okay? And you're gonna cut three on the fold. So make sure that you're cutting three of these on the fold. Then we also have some elastic guides. So these are not cut out of fabric, these are cut out of elastic. The first one is pattern piece number six. This is the elastic guide for A and B. You're gonna cut one. And then you have the, and this is obviously for the waist, right, for the hem of the top. Um, and then you have pattern piece number five, which is the elastic guide for the sleeve. And you're going to uh, cut two pieces of elastic this length. Now, once you have everything cut and interfaced, we can start sewing. All right, so on your front piece, the very first thing you wanna do is you wanna create your stay stitching line. So go ahead, head to your machine. This is very basic. You should know how to do your stay stitching. I like to do my stay stitching four eighths of an inch from the edge. Um, just so that you can't see it when I stitch this on at five eighths of an inch, but also so it's not too close to the neckline. So I use about four eighths of an inch. You're gonna create a stitching line along your neck. Okay, so now I have my two backs and because we have this open back here, you wanna make yours, you wanna go ahead and do your stay stitching along this cut edge on both of your pieces. So along the front of your neckline and then along the back neckline. All right, so to get started on our back, we're first gonna have to make our back ties. So with right sides facing, you're gonna fold this in half and pin. Okay, and at the sewing machine, we're going to close out the straight end and stitch all the way down, but we're gonna leave the angled side open so that we can turn it right side out. And we're using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're gonna fold your ties both in half, right sides facing, and pin the same way as I did this one. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the angled side. And again, we're using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end. I'm gonna pivot. Now go ahead and trim your seam allowance to 3 eighths of an inch. You're gonna do your other tie the same way. Okay, once you have trimmed your seam allowance, you can go ahead and turn your ties to the right side. Go ahead and poke out your corners and give them a good press. All right, so I'm gonna grab both my back pieces now, and you should have marked two dots where your ties are gonna be placed. So with your tie angle like this so that your tie is going down, you know that the tie is wrong if when you place it like this, your tie is going sideways, okay? You don't want it going like this, you need it to go down. So you're gonna place it in between those dots, just like that, and you're gonna pin. You're gonna do the same thing on the other side, and remember your uh, right side's facing, this is the right side of my fabric, in between my dots, and pin. Now just run over to your machine real quick and just baste these down. All right, now that we have our ties um, stitched down, we can go ahead and close up the back. So with right sides facing each other, we're going to pin along the center back. Make sure that you um, are always looking to align your notches. Okay, now you're gonna stitch from the bottom up to where you see your dot. There should have been a dot that you transferred here that lets you know when you're gonna stop stitching. You're gonna start from the bottom, you're gonna stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna stitch and stop and back stitch at your dot. Okay, so I'm starting at the bottom. I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and again at that dot. All right, so I've gone ahead and stitched. I've also pressed my seams open. I'm gonna turn this to the right side. We're gonna sew our shoulders together. So you're gonna grab your front and with right sides facing, we're gonna go ahead and pin along our shoulder. Okay, you're gonna pin your other shoulder the same way and we're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance.
Now that we have our shoulders done, we're gonna go ahead and start on our facing so we, that we can attach it. So I'm gonna set this aside for just a sec. So you're gonna grab your back facings and your front facings, and we're gonna go ahead and pin. Make sure that you're aligning that notch. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring this angled edge together. You should have two notches there, so go ahead and stitch those notches together or pin, I should say, pin where those two notches are. Okay, so now at the sewing machine, you're gonna stitch across the shoulders of your facing using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're also going to stitch from the bottom up and stop at the dot. Again, also using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right, I'm gonna do my shoulders first. Now I have my dot marked on here, and so I put a pin right through there, sort of like that, so that you can see it, um, because I'm starting from this side. So I wanna make sure that I know where to stop. Again, 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Backstitch. Okay, now I want you to go ahead and press this seam open, press your shoulder seams open, and if you have a serger, then you can go ahead and finish all the way around the outside of your facing. All right, now that we have our facing complete, we're gonna go ahead and attach it to our neckline. So I'm gonna go ahead and first pin at my shoulders. Make sure that you are right sides facing. I'm gonna match my shoulder seams. All right, and then I'm, I also have two dots that I marked on my facing, so I'm gonna ma make sure that that's aligned where my uh, ties are, and I'm just gonna pin there. You also have a notch, so you should make sure that you're aligning your notch. I'm gonna pin at my center front. Okay, so when we get here, and I'll show you this on the machine, we're gonna go ahead and open out our pressed seam allowance stitch until we get to that dot, okay? That's why that dot is so important. As soon as we get to that dot, we're gonna back stitch and break our stitch, and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna open up the pressed seam allowance, and again, from that dot, we're gonna continue. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start at the center back. That's just where I like to start, and I'm gonna back stitch, and we're gonna stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance until we get that, until, <laughs> We're gonna sew using five eighths of an inch seam allowance until we get to the center front dot. Okay, I'm nearing my dot, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove my center front pin and I'm gonna open out my seam allowance so I can see where my dot is. Now I'm gonna start on the other side of that dot, so I'm gonna go ahead and open out this seam allowance. I'm gonna manually put my needle in where I see my dot. So now I want you to trim your seam allowance to 3 eighths of an inch, and then I want you to press your seam allowance towards your facing. All right, now that you have your facing nicely pressed to the inside, you can go ahead and do your top stitching. I suppose it's optional if you don't wanna do the top stitching, you don't have to. Your facing will stay to the inside, but if you wanna do the top stitching for um, aesthetics, then go ahead and do your top stitching. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to fold this we're gonna go ahead and turn this back to wrong sides face, or right sides facing, I'm sorry. And we're gonna pin along our side seam and down the sleeve. Okay, now go ahead and pin your other side seam and sleeve the same way. We're gonna start at the hem, we're gonna stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay. 
If you have a serger, go ahead and serge your side seam and sleeve. You're gonna do the other side the same way. All right, so although I'm doing the elastic uh, casing for my sleeve, I am just gonna quickly show you what you're um, gonna do if you're, for example, doing the cuff. So you have a fold line um, that was on your pattern piece for the fold of the cuff. So you have two options. You can either finish the edge off with your serger or you can turn and press a quarter of an inch. Once you do that, you're going to fold along that fold line that was given on your pattern piece, okay? Just like this, and you're going to press that so it's nice and flat, and then you're going to stitch along the edge. Now, after you've done that and it's stitched, you're going to, on the right side, you're going to turn again along that other fold line to create your cuff. The um, folded edge of your cuff should go just past that stitching line that you did. You're gonna press that and then you're going to stitch, sort of just tack this down here and then also at the under seam, underarm seam so that they stay in place. That's how you're gonna be doing the cuff. But like I said, I'm gonna be doing the elastic casing. So um, that's the instruction that you will actually see me do in the video. Okay, so if we're doing the, if you're doing the elastic casing like I am, you're going to turn an inch and a half to the inside, okay? And then you're gonna press it. So you're gonna go ahead and use your ruler or your um, seam gauge to make sure that it's all even at one and a half inches. And you're gonna go ahead and press that. After you press it, then you're gonna turn in a quarter inch and press that. Okay, so I have folded my inch and a half and then I also folded the edge a quarter of an inch and now I'm gonna top stitch close to the edge. I'm gonna leave a small opening about an inch wide so that we can insert our elastic. You're gonna do the other sleeve the same way. Okay, so I've cut two pieces of elastic. I'm using my elastic guide and I'm gonna use my safety pin. And we left an opening, right, where we're gonna insert our elastic. So go ahead and put your pin in. and you're gonna sift it through until you come out the other side. Now remember that um, you don't want the end of your elastic to go into the casing, so when you get close to it, and there's probably about an inch or inch and a half left, I like to pin it to the garment so it doesn't accidentally go inside of my casing and then I gotta try and fish it out. All right, you wanna make sure and feel around so that you uh, can make sure that your elastic did not um, turn or twist on you while you were inserting it. Okay, now you're just gonna overlap this. I overlap it by about three eighths of an inch and you're just gonna stitch them together. Then once you do that, you can close out your opening. So now that we've done the elastic for our sleeves, I should mention that if you don't want elastic at the waist, don't put it in, right? Instead, just turn under the uh, seam allowance, which is exactly the same as our sleeve casing. You're gonna fold an inch and a half, and then you're gonna fold in a quarter of an inch. You're gonna stitch close to the edge. If you don't wish to do the elastic, then you simply just hem it. If you do want to do the elastic, you're going to do it exactly like we just did the sleeve. There is no difference, so go ahead and press your one and a half inches, turn in your quarter of an, in of an inch, edge stitch around, leaving an opening at the side seam so that you can insert your elastic same way that we did here. All right, now once you're done either hemming the top or inserting your elastic, your top is finished. So we can set this aside and start working on our skirt. So for your skirt, you have three panels that we cut on the fold. What you're gonna do is along the top, at the waist, you're going to do two rows of gathering stitches. Now, you could do it the way the instructions tell you, and first we're gonna sew the side seams and then do the gathering, but I find it so much easier 
to gather two rows on the individual three pieces and then do my side seams and pull my gathers. I just find it a lot easier to manage. So that's what I've done here. So I'm gonna have you do two rows of gathering stitches. Use the longest stitch available on your sewing machine. And I've done that for all three of my skirt pieces. Okay, two rows, two rows, and two rows of gathering stitches. I stopped at the notches, so you should have notches here. I stopped there about 5 eighths of an inch from the edge because we still have to sew these together. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna grab one and with uh, the right side facing me, I'm gonna go ahead and lay one of my other skirt pieces, right sides facing of course, and I'm gonna pin first at this notch here, this side seam notch. Okay, now I'm gonna move this to the side and I'm gonna attach, again, right sides facing. I'm gonna attach the other side. Make sure that you're aligning those notches. All right, so now these will become our side seams. They will be off um, just a tad because we're gonna be attaching the side seam to the small dot on our yoke so that we can evenly distribute the skirt. Um, and then this here becomes our center back seam. So first go to your sewing machine and starting at the hem, work your way up, stitching using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're gonna do both sides the same way. Do the other side the same way. All right, now that we have our side seams stitched, I went ahead and pressed my seam allowances towards what is gonna be my center back. You're gonna go ahead and grab your uh, yoke pieces. We're gonna be working with our interfaced yoke. So I have gone ahead and placed mine right sides up facing me. You can see I have two dots here that I transferred from the pattern piece. This is where we're gonna be aligning those side seams, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pin my side seams of my yoke together. You have a notch there. And then I'm gonna do the other one on the other side. Okay, and just go ahead and stitch these down at the side seams using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then I want you to press your seams open. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and pin our skirt to our yoke and gather. So the first thing I like to do is to pin it before I gather. So as you can see, my skirt is facing uh, wrong side up and my yoke is facing right side up. That's because it's just easier for me to pin this way and stitch and then um, know that I am placing it exactly where it needs to go. So I have a dot here and a dot here again. So I know that that is where my side seams are gonna be placed. So I'm gonna pin there first. And then I'm gonna place my other side seam also on the other dot. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gather this section right here, okay? I'm gonna gather from where my side seams are on my dots. So because we did each section individually, it just makes it much easier. Okay, so I gathered just enough so that I can see that it fits, right? So now I've gathered up the skirt so that it fits in between my dots. And I'm gonna go ahead and tie my knot, my uh, strings off. Now once it's tied off, I can go ahead and just distribute my gathers evenly. Okay, once I know that I've gathered and distributed, I can go ahead and pin a couple more times. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with the next section. 
So I'm going to pull the gathering stitches on this side until it fits onto my yoke. You're going to do the other section the same way. All right, now that we have it um, gathered and pinned onto our yoke, we can go ahead and stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right, so I have pressed my um, seam allowance up towards my yoke. I am gonna trim some of the seam allowance down to about 3 eighths of an inch. I just haven't done it just yet, um, but you might want to do that as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and I've brought together the center back seams, right sides are facing because you see the wrong side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start stitching from the hem up until I get till about three inches from where this notch is, okay? So I'm gonna make myself a little dot from this notch down about three inches. I'm gonna make a little dot there. That's gonna remind me that that's where I'm gonna stop my zipper. So I'm gonna remove my pin and place it at my dot. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch from the bottom using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're gonna back stitch. You're gonna stitch all the way up until we get to this dot that we just made. You're gonna back stitch and cut your thread. Now we're gonna continue sewing from this dot up to the top of our waistband, but we're gonna be doing it in a basting stitch, a very long stitch because we're gonna remove it. So it's really important that you make sure that you pin and align your yoke seams. You don't want those to be off. So I'm gonna pin them, make sure they're perfectly aligned, and I'm gonna pin. All right, let's head to the sewing machine. All right, I've gotten to my dot, so I'm gonna backstitch. And I'm gonna cut my thread. Now I'm gonna switch to my longest stitch available. I am not gonna backstitch. I'm just going to stitch till I get to the very top. Go ahead and press your seam open. Okay, once you have your seams pressed open, we can go ahead and grab our zipper and we're going to um, head over to the sewing machine so I can walk you through the steps of how I insert my invisible zipper. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that everything is to the left of me and that I'm only working on this one seam allowance. I always place my, I use extra long zippers so that I can go beyond my waistline and um, just keep the zipper pull completely out of the way. Now we're only basting this in place, um, but as I'm doing it, I am still trying to make sure that I align the center of the zipper with my seam. And we're just gonna baste this down. Okay, you're gonna turn this around and you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Again, make sure you're only stitching on the seam allowance. Okay, now I want you to remove just this basting stitch. Okay, so I had base, I've had basted my um, zipper. I'm gonna open it and then I'm gonna push my zipper pull through to the opening at the bottom. That way I can move the zipper pull completely out of my way. Okay, now we're gonna head back to the sewing machine so we can finish up our zipper. Okay, if you have an invisible zipper foot, you can go ahead and attach it. You can also just use your regular zipper foot if you don't have an invisible zipper foot. All right, so using a normal length stitch, we're gonna stitch close to the edge. The invisible zipper foot sort of does that for you because it has a little groove here that sort of opens up your coils a little bit. If you're using a regular um, zipper foot, not an, an invisible zipper foot, you can still do the same thing. I would just recommend that as you sew, you slightly open up your coils. I have a ton of videos um, using that method without this invisible zipper foot, uh, which you can sort of watch and follow along with. Okay, now you're gonna turn it over and do the same thing. Now you can go ahead and close your zipper. Okay, once you have your zipper done, you can go ahead and close it, set it aside for just a second. You're gonna put together your yoke facings the same way that you did your yoke, so I've already done mine. 
Um, I've also made sure that I pressed my seams open. Now along the bottom edge, I turned and pressed 5 eighths of an inch, and then I trimmed that down to 3 eighths of an inch. Now we can go ahead and pin our yoke facing to our yoke. So with right sides facing, I'm gonna go ahead and pin. And don't worry, at the end of this, I just sort of trim off that very top. You wanna make sure that you're matching up your seam lines. Okay, we're gonna to head to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch starting at one end just along the top, we'll close our ends off later. We're gonna sew all the way across the top using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and close off the sides. I'm gonna switch to my zipper foot. Okay, now we're gonna trim our corners and trim some of our seam allowance, cutting off the very top of that zipper. Okay, now we can go ahead and turn our yoke facing to the inside, pull out the corners of your zipper, I want you to press your seam allowance up towards your yoke facing, and then I want you to understitch. Okay, making sure that your seam allowance is up towards your yoke facing, you're going to stitch close, about maybe a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch away from your seam. Okay, go ahead and press your facing to the inside. All right, once you've pressed your facing to the inside, I'm gonna go ahead and pin it in place so I can stitch in the ditch. I like to stitch on the right side of my garment, and so what I do is I first make sure that the folded edge is past my stitching line, and you can generally feel that on the right side, and then I'm going to pin, making sure that I'm catching that folded edge. You're gonna continue doing this until your entire yoke facing is pinned. Okay, once you have it pinned, you're gonna go ahead and stitch in the ditch. All right, I'm gonna stitch in the ditch, which means that I want my needle to go right in between this seam. Okay, once you have your yoke finished, you can go ahead and finish off the hem of your skirt. You might wanna try it on. Um, you might want to uh, shorten it depending on your preference. So I would suggest trying it on first before you do your hem. If you're happy with it, then just you're going to serge or finish off the edge um, and then fold and press your hem allowance. So I want a really clean finish, so I'm gonna press my hem allowance, and then again, turn in a quarter of an inch, same way that we did the casing for our sleeve, and then stitch close to the edge. Once you're done with that, you are all done with your skirt. Now, if you're choosing to do your sash, with right sides facing, you're going to bring your sashes together and you're going to stitch along this edge, making sure that you're pinning and aligning that notch. You're gonna stitch straight down. All right, now you're gonna go ahead and with right sides facing, bring those seams together and pin. Now once you have it pinned, you're gonna go ahead and stitch. What I like to do is I leave an opening right in the middle because we need to turn this right side out. So I start on one side of my seam and I stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way down and then down the angled side. 
and then I start again on the other side, leaving about an inch, inch and a half open, and then I stitch the remaining side and then turn this right side out using your opening. Okay, I'm gonna trim off the ends here. And a bit here in my corner. And now I'm gonna turn my tie to the right side. Now you wanna go ahead and using a point turner or something, you wanna go in and poke out your corners. You can also use a pin. Now you're gonna go ahead and press your sash nice and flat. All right guys, now that you have it nice and flat, all you have left to do is to close your opening. You can either slip stitch this by hand or you can edge stitch it closed on your sewing machine, finish the hem of your skirt, and you are all done.